Hello, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. Delighted to have you on board. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel here on YouTube. I am your host, Jimmy Smith. This is a wine educational channel which is really designed to help you get the most out of your wine studies so you can, of course, get into those exams with a huge amount of confidence and smash it out of the park. So let's look at our series here. So we're part of this huge section, of course, called Bordeaux. And here we're on series six uh, and looking at part one, which is on the, this is right bank, so saint Emilion area. There's a picture of Chateau Angelus in the picture. Uh, so let's have a look at this. Series six of nine. Whoa, lots to go through, of course. And uh, we are here looking at the three parts. Uh, we're here looking at Saint Emilion and Saint Emilion Grand Cru. I'm also adding on the satellites of Saint Emilion in this video as well. Now you'll see part one. This one is available as free content here on the world of YouTube. But part two, Pomerol and Associations. Côte de Bordeaux on part three and Côte de Bourg are only available on my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. So go across there and, of course, subscribe for all of this wonderful exclusive content to help you with your studies. And you get access to things like multiple choice questions and flashcards and all of those kind of things as well well and it's ad free unlike the world of youtube so uh, if you have any comments maybe you've got some questions or maybe you've just got some concerns please do get in touch and you can do so by commenting on this video below here on youtube make sure you click like and subscribe you can also get in touch by social media you see at the bottom of every slide. Let's rock and roll with Saint Emilion and Saint Emilion Grand Cru. So here is the map of Bordeaux, as you will see. The right bank is characterized by many small estates. Uh, some of them are as small as one hectare, a couple of acres. And the dominance of Merlot is really quite a significant part here. It does very well on those cooler clay soils. Then Cabernet Franc and then small plantations of Cabernet Sauvignon to be found here. So Merlot is the dominating one, 60%. Uh, is the, the number here, but you'll often see a lot of great centimillions with up to around 80% in their final blend. Now, centimillion has its own classification system, and that will be discovered and discussed in the classification series, uh, which I think is series eight of the Bordeaux section. There's a great range in styles here in saint Emilion as well. We have some quite simple wines being made for early drinking, all the way through to top Grand Cru Classé wines that are comparable in quality to the first growths of the left bank that were allocated in the 1855 classification. So let's have a look at our two designations to begin with. There you go. So there's your map, as you will see, saint Emilion and saint Emilion Grand Cru. So the two areas um, of the two AOCs, so this shares the same area. Uh, saint Emilion AOC has a higher limit on its red wine at 53 hectolitres per hectare and mandates six months minimum of ageing. Whereas saint Emilion Grand Cru uh, is a smaller limit at 46 hectolitres per hectare with a mandation of 20 months of ageing. Uh, and what makes a Grand Cru will depend really on a lot of things in the bureaucracy of the wine world. So we're talking about history of estate, location, geology, and also the, um, the quality that is coming out of that estate. Uh, we'll be talking about that much greater detail in the classification system. 
Uh, now, you'll notice on that map, there is also an area called FRONSAC, which is actually not discussed whatsoever in the diploma, shame. And then the green areas of Pomerol, Lalanda Pomerol, that will be on a future video, the next video along in this series. And then the satellites in the yellow and lighter sort of orangey current colours. I'll discuss that later in this video. What about the styles that we find here then? So the top wines typically here, so we're talking about the most premium wines, will have pronounced red and black plum fruit with noticeable clove and vanilla new oak character. They're often quite concentrated. You will find full body, high alcohol, with often towards high tannins and towards high acidity. So these are not wines generally for the faint hearted. Because of this intense fruit concentration, high tannins and high acid, the very best wines here will have an exceptional ability to age, of course. And some great, uh, some great examples. Here you have the very famous Chateau Ozone just on the outskirts of saint Emilion. It's one of the few famed Bordeaux estates that has actually remained in family uh, ownership, which is, um, you know, it's not too typical today with, of course, lots of insurance companies and foreign investments coming in, certainly into Bordeaux. And in fact, only three different families have owned Chateau Ozone over its um, its lifetime. Now, the, or the order of those three families of Ozone uh, the Lescure family from the 13th to the 16th uh, centuries. Then uh, eventually Jacques de Lescure, uh, different spelling, and it, his heirs in the 17th century. Uh, and then we have um, the Chantonneau Chantonnet family along with the Dubois Chalon Vauthier. And the Vauthier is the important part today. Alain Vauffier manages Chateau Ozone with his daughter Pauline today, and they're direct descendants of these 17th century owners. Um, in 2021, it must be mentioned that uh, Chateau Ozone, along with Chateau Cheval Blanc, made a surprise announcement that from the that vintage onwards, they're not going to be participating in the classification. So that's something which will be discussed in greater detail in the classification video. And here we are for Cheval Blanc. There you are. So a little bit of history about this estate. In 1832, the Ducasse family purchased land from the much larger estate of Chateau Figiac. Uh, and the breakup of the large Figiac estate helped create a lot of new saint Emilion winemaking estates. And that's quite um, noticeable. You see the word Fijiac in lots, hyphenated in lots of estates across this area. Now, prior to its rebirth as Cheval Blanc, the vineyard was better known as Le Barral de Caillou, which loosely translates to the Barrel of Tiny Stones. Uh, which took its inspiration from those quite famous loose gravelly uh, soils that you find, the unique gravelly soils. Cheval Blanc continued gaining in popularity, producing some of the wines uh, that are famed as the best in Bordeaux during the 1920s, the 1940s and the 1950s. And 1947 Cheval Blanc, famous as I think it is mentioned in like movies like Sideways, created what many older and experienced wine tasters considered the best Bordeaux wine of all time, uh, which is quite a, um, a claim. In 1998, the chateau was purchased by Bernard Arnault and Baron Albert Frère for about 135 million francs and Pierre Lurton became the managing uh, part of it. 2009, Louis Vuitton Moet in Hennessy purchased the shares owned by Bernard Arnault in a private transaction. There was no official announcement of the price, but they rumoured that it was around 15 million euros per hectare, making it the most expensive transaction to date for wine. Um, so once we go further 
out of uh, Saint Emilion, the red area here, and we go to the north, this is what we call the Saint Emilion satellites. So these are the four AOCs close to Saint Emilion, but they're further away from the River Dordogne, which is in the south part of your map. Now there are similar wines made with quite similar rules to generic Saint Emilion here. The, um, the first one we are identifying is the most northerly, is in fact Lusac Saint Emilion, which has about 1400 hectares of vines. Now it takes its name from uh, ancient Roman roots, this one, so the Lusac part of it. Uh, it's a ruins of an ancient Roman villa, which was named for the Roman Lucius, who was known for first cultivating this landscape. We then have Montani below that. This is the largest of all of the satellites with about, um, about 1550, so 1550 hectares under vine. Uh, it has around 220 growers here, so quite a, uh, a, an available amount in this area. Uh, Puisjin is next. Uh, so this one is uh, actually take its name from Pui, which is an old Celtic word that means a hill of powerful wine. And the second part is from Seguin, which is an officer that served under the Emperor Charlemagne. And the total size of this is only around 700 hectares. And then the smallest little enclave there at the um, southern section of the satellites is Saint Georges, only 180 hectares of this uh, satellite. Um, but it is, in fact, one of the highest elevations at around 90 meters of the whole of the right bank. So let's have a look at a video, a Google Earth video, to give you a recap on what we've just learned there with saint Emilion. So there is the Bordeaux region. We're going to get rid of the, the red area, um, but we're going to have actually have a look at the Dordogne River to the north because it's the one that's important for the right bank. So the most northerly river there that runs into the Gironde. And here we are focusing on that area of sitting to the, uh, the east of the city of Libourne, and really then bordered by the Dordogne River in the south. And this is the saint Emilion AOC with saint Emilion Grand Cru. Uh, we're going to uh, look at some of the famous estates so you get a good idea of this landscape. Chateau Ozone, of course, being the one just outside the, um, the, the town of saint Emilion. Uh, by the Vauffier family, ex exceptional estate, making some of, I think, the most expensive saint Emilion on the market. Chateau Angelus was the holding picture at the, at the front of the presentation, remember. Uh, they are today one of the top, uh, the top categories. Uh, and also Cheval Blanc, uh, mentioned earlier. The White Horse, famous for a lot of Cabernet Franc here, but towards the border of Pomerol. Uh, another one, Chateau Pavi as well uh, in that list uh, for the famous estates. And of course, there have been changes in the classifications that will be talked about in the classification sac section. So, yes, the area for Saint Emilion and Saint Emilion Grand Cru is the same. And we've got certain chateaux, of course, which are elevated to that level. OK, so that brings me to the end of the diploma knowledge, giving you a few extra bits there and, of course, some information about famous chateau about the right bank area. Please do join me for part two, looking at the powerful wines of Pomerol and the sub area of Le Land de Pomerol. This will only be available for subscribers to the e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Any questions, any concerns or any comments, please do pop them in the comments below this video or get in touch. Uh, and you could do so by the social media you find at the bottom of every slide. And if you find yourself in London, please do come and see me at one of my establishments, maybe for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Bye bye. <laughs>